Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting this evening's show. Uh, out to the west, uh, you can see this is the front that's uh, weakening out over the eastern Al Aleutians and into the Bering Sea today. Uh, snow showers following in behind the main low center back up in through here. And then back to the west, a couple of systems, a uh, mass of moisture right down in here at the low center there, and then a, a colder system up in here. Those two are going to merge uh, actually later tonight and uh, swing on up toward the Aleutians for some increasing winds starting late tomorrow afternoon or evening. And then it looks like uh, probably some storm force winds moving into that area late tomorrow night and into uh, Sunday morning. Otherwise, a lot of clear skies here again over the southeast coast. Still some gusty winds uh, east-northeast 15 to 25 miles an hour here over areas, channeled areas of the southern portion, north, northern areas again uh, 25 to 35 miles an hour in gusts up here more from a nor northerly direction or north-northeast. A little bit of moisture, a uh, band of it there across the Queen Charlotte's bringing uh, pretty good winds, gale force easterlies down there, but those uh, didn't quite make it across Dixon entrance. Or there was an increase in the wind, about 15 to 25, but most of the moisture staying down to the south, just some variable cloudiness, but sunshine, Gulf of Alaska again, all the way up uh, to the Brooks Range. You get to the North Slope areas there, and there is uh, some lower clouds. You can kind of see the movement there. And uh, with the lower clouds, there's some patchy areas of fog and a few flurries there. High pressure up there, but some of that low level moisture getting caught up in the circulation there. So uh, some areas breaking out, uh, other areas seeing sun while, again, pretty good area there along the north slope, especially the, up toward the Brooks Range, seeing the cloudiness. A lot of cloudiness here out in the northern Bering Sea. And this band right through here, kind of a wave there forming on that, that looks like it's going to kind of share apart and uh, well for tonight uh, the one center back here that you may have seen before I bounce the map ahead anyway that's going to weaken into a trough here and that's going to spread uh, a little bit of moisture in probably holding off until tomorrow and toward Kodiak Island here's that low center swings up like this so that's going to keep the Alaska Peninsula on the damp side tonight uh, periods of light rain or rain and snow mixed uh, this front here really weakening, just some areas of moisture there, but that's going to be west of the coastline and even Nunavak Island and already to the east of the Perbloffs. Uh, picked up about a quarter of an inch there at St. Paul in the last 24 hours of uh, mostly snow, or it all, all fell as snow until right at the end of mixed with rain. Look for some scattered, isolated snow showers there from the Alaska Peninsula. Falls Pass back over to Unalaska and Nikolsky, and uh, higher pressure generally coming in to the uh, central Bering Sea, but uh, for tonight, just clear skies, light winds, uh, hanging on to that easterly wind that uh, Delta Junction saw gusts up to 35 miles an hour today, and that blowing along the Tanana River over toward Nanana, 
with uh, gusts in the 20 to 22 mile an hour range. Looks like those will hang on here with a higher pressure over the Yukon and Northwest Territories of Canada. But it looks like that gradient will be relaxing, so those winds should be coming down. Light winds continuing there. Uh, a little brisk on the west side. Uh, Point Lake could see some uh, 20 to 25 mile an hour winds uh, through this area. And then some variable clouds, uh, mostly due to an upper trough here and maybe some fog, even some flurries here over the Yukon Delta, but mostly clear elsewhere. And farther out uh, in the bearing again, high pressure just south of the uh, Adak Yatka area. And the snow showers mostly up to the north, some of those clipping the uh, Shimia area. Actually, it'll be on the decrease uh, tonight. And then for tomorrow, uh, this high even builds in more strongly there in over the Bering Sea and kind of shifting over toward the eastern Aleutians. So the northwest winds, as that builds up, will get a little gusty here along the Alaska Peninsula for a short time, but nothing strong or too terribly strong. And that's going to keep the snow showers banked up on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, better conditions to the south. Uh, look for mostly cloudy skies, a chance of uh, rain or snow in the morning, areas of light rain or drizzle in the afternoon, especially along the east side of Kodiak Island. Some of that cloudiness will begin to uh, make a little bit of a stride up toward the Kenai Peninsula, but I think it'll stay mostly clear, definitely VFR all along the coastline. Winds will remain light. Uh, variable cloudiness again over the southeast coast, but it looks like most of the moisture will stay either to the east or off the coast there. So you may uh, have a dry day there, but not quite as much sunshine as we'll have up to the northern areas there. And again, sunshine, Prince William Sound, Valdez, uh, Whittier, all the way up into the interior, maybe some variable clouds. A weak upper trough here could bring a few scattered flurries and variable cloudiness here over the Yukon Delta areas and across Norton Sound to maybe the Seward Peninsula, but nothing significant at all. And then taking a look at uh, Sunday's forecast, looks like this big storm uh, rolling up. Uh, well, again, winds will begin to increase with this as early as late tomorrow afternoon there over the central Aleutians. And then it looks like the uh, gales will come in Saturday evening. Storm force winds ahead of this front will reach the area, especially the central Aleutians, probably toward late tomorrow night at the earliest or early on Sunday. And then you can see during the day Sunday, this whole system will begin to advance eastward, bringing some rain to Nikolsky, but winds will be on the increase throughout the afternoon hours here over the eastern Aleutians, uh, possibly reaching a gale force during the afternoon hours. Much lighter winds here, the calm before the storm uh, that'll shift up over the Bristol Bay area. So light winds, another sunny day here, much of the west coast. In fact, uh, other than this very weak upper trough that's uh, swinging up to the northeast, uh, Variable clouds, a few flurries possible, no significant amounts. Uh, and then another trough uh, kind of sneaking in from Canada here could bring a little bit of moisture and a few flurries there. But again, most of that will stay off to the east. Sunshine here over the southeast coast, notably less wind, especially Lynn Canal Glacier Bay and the channeled areas that have seen the wind, uh, just about losing it there and the clouds still down towards uh, Heidelberg to a Ketchikan net and southward. But it looks like it'll be pretty dry with uh, this system moving by to the east, well to the south of the area there. And up along the Arctic coast, high pressure now developing up to the north. That may result in an increase in those winds on the east side there, but only looking at maybe 20 to uh, 20 miles an hour at the most over toward Kaktovik. Otherwise, easterly is about 10 to 15, lots of sunshine, Brooks Range, North Slope areas. Patchy fog possible, and that will all be on the eastern coastline. Offshore flow will keep it dry on the west side. And again, variable clouds, Kotzebue Sound, maybe a risk of a flurry or two, but a good shot of rain swinging up to the Aleutians along with those storm force winds. Coming back around, going north, northeasterly, 40 knots there for Shimmy and that too. Temperatures this afternoon at 4 o'clock, we're in the uh, mid-40s for the most part on average here across the Panhandle, 45 at Sitka, 43 over at uh, Petersburg and Wrangell, 41 in Juneau, 48, a little warmer down there at uh, Klawak, upper 30s along the North Gulf Coast, but Seward and Homer pushed up to 41, upper 30s for Kodiak Island, mid-30s here with sunshine over much of uh, South Central Alaska, 36 up at Talkeetna. Same thing in Fairbanks, Tanaw Valley rising into the mid-30s during the afternoon hours, 27 at Minchumina, 
and about the same at Fort Yukon of 28, uh, notably colder there at Anatovic, just 12 degrees, and the Arctic coast all above zero, barely. Dead Horse at 1, Barrow at 4, 6 at Kaktovik, same thing at Point Lay, and uh, 17 at Kivalina, just 3 degrees there at uh, Selawick. 21 though at Shishmaref and about the same condition there temperature wise at Nome. 23 Savunga and uh, in the teens here along the uh, coastline except uh, pushed up to 23 at Tuxuk Bay, 19 at Bethel but much milder up the rivers there, uh, 28 uh, upper 20s to 31 at McGrath and over at Sparavon. Mid 30s for the Pribilofs and near 40 for the Aleutians, except for the colder air coming in with the snow showers there at Shimia. 39 on Alaska, same thing at Cold Bay, and a 39 also up at King Salmon. For the lows tonight, uh, 20s and 30s here over the Panhandle, mildest down to the south with more cloud cover, and 14, the forecast low for Yakutat, otherwise lower 30s for Kodiak, teens and 20s again for South Central Alaska, Copper River Basin, uh, falling in a little below zero once again, as well as much of the eastern interior all the way up to, well, all the way to the Arctic coast up there and uh, lower to mid-teens here over the uh, southwest interior, closer to 20 out toward the Bering Sea, 30 for the Pribilofs, lower 30s for the Aleutians. Highs tomorrow, much like today, upper 30s, lower 40s through much of uh, south-central interior. Mid-30s, not much of a change up through the Tanana Valley and possibly a little milder up here over the Arctic coast, teens to lower 20s in the northwest and mostly 40s here to upper 40s over the southern panhandle, near 40 for the Aleutians. And flying weather, good VFR tomorrow here again, north Gulf Coast, Cook Inlet, all the way up until you get to the Arctic coast there with uh, patchy areas of marginal VFR and where there's marginal VFR up there, usually there's some isolated areas of IFR, otherwise not a bad day. And again, some areas of uh, lower conditions possible, mostly over the Yukon Delta areas. Uh, some of that might show up over the Kuskokwim Delta as well, but uh, definitely along and off the coast it'll be much lower with the remnants of that weakening front bringing some IFR there from the northern Bering Sea right down the west side of Nunavak Island and into the Alaska Peninsula. Again that northwest wind flow that'll go make for VFR conditions on the Pacific side of things except right through here with some of this moisture coming up from the southeast or leftover moisture. They'll be mostly up over Kodiak Island, so Fognac Island on down to the Chiniac Marmot Bay Area's marginal VFR there. Otherwise, Shelikoff Strait, VFR, big chunk of the Aleutians looking at VFR, and Shimmy occasionally IFR. Passes, no changes from the last several days or more, all VFR again. Lake Clark, Merrill, ceilings, visibility is unlimited for rainy, windy, all the way over to Isabella Mentasta. Tanita also, Portage, good VFR tomorrow, either approach, Chilkoot and White, wide open. Freezing levels at the surface here, cutting across, uh, well, near the Pribilofs, down to the Alaska Peninsula, then up along the coastline, uh, slicing through the southeast coast, and 2,000 feet down here over the southern areas. And uh, this kind of the outer edge of the freezing levels will be coming northward throughout the day tomorrow. Actually, it'll be quite a push of warm air coming up into the central Aleutians uh, late tomorrow night with that uh, storm system in advance of the front. Otherwise, icing threats, none out there tomorrow, and just a chance of icing, that's about it, of the uh, rime, maybe mixed varieties here, roughly two to 12,000 feet, and even less of a chance over the Alaska Peninsula, over to about on Alaska. Otherwise, everywhere else, uh, icing free. The uh, high pressure area loft now beginning to weaken and one portion sliding eastward, another uh, portion building back to the northwest. So that's going to allow this trough out here over the west to swing in a little bit there. But again, that's associated with that front and not a lot of uh, activity with it or weather. The southern branch down here staying down to the south and then uh, watching for that development tomorrow that will swing up right up into the central Aleutians. And for 9,000 feet, in advance of that developing storm, high pressure, but note the increase in the winds out there toward Shimia coming up to 35 knots. Light variable winds here, really all across the southern uh, part of the state. Southeast light for the panhandle, maybe some 20 knot winds here through the interior. Western Arctic coast uh, where those brisk wind advisories are for the uh, marine area up there, but lighter to the east. 
3,000 foot winds uh, showing a weak low here over western Norton Sound, so very light winds around that. Light variable winds here, southern Alaska, Prince William Sound, on over the Yakutat, and even light winds for the most part there, except down toward the uh, Prince of Wales Island area, a little brisker, but only 20 knots. And the western Arctic coast easterlies at around 20 knots. And again, those winds increasing out there. Uh, we'll see a significant increase in the winds tomorrow night and Sunday. Turbulence-wise, maybe some moderate chop out toward Chimia. A little bumpy mechanical turbulence with those uh, gusty east winds on the eastern Arctic coast. Otherwise, uh, not too bad here. Mechanical turbulence possible. The Alaska Peninsula and maybe some leftover stuff for the northern panhandle. And after the uh, hangar flying segment, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Good evening, I'm Harry Keeling. And on behalf of Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation and Alaska Public Media, welcome to Hangar Flying. Tonight we welcome back Rob Stapleton. Last time Rob was on, he talked about some of his adventures, like being with a team that took, that, with a group that took a dog team to the top of Denali. Rob is also a very experienced pilot, and tonight I want to concentrate a little bit more on uh, aviation and aviation safety. Welcome back, Rob. Yeah. Thanks again. One of the questions I ask my guests is what one thing would, would you do to make aviation safety safer in Alaska? I think pilots need to fly more and practice more. I think proficiency is one of the big issues now with the cost of fuel. People aren't flying as much. Um, some people say weather patterns have changed. I think proficiency is, is of the utmost importance. Yeah. Um, and if you need, call up a CFI and get them to go Absolutely. out there with it? Absolutely. There's, I think there's, I've heard that there are about 1,200 CFIs in the Anchorage area, but I think there's probably about 400 active. So it's kind of, it's, it's kind of crazy to me to think that people don't go out and ask a CFI to go fly with them if they haven't flown for a while. Exactly. One of the things I want to talk about was you had mentioned that you had gotten involved with ultralights at Birchwood. And uh, talk a little bit about that. Right. I got involved with uh, Mike Jacober with his um, Arctic Sparrow Aircraft Flight School, primarily through an assignment with, uh, ex with the Experimenter magazine, um, the Experimental Aircraft Association's magazine. Mary Jones called me up and asked me to do a photo shoot on, on Mike Jacober. And um, in doing so, Mike was like, well, you know, you fly GA aircraft, but you've never flown one of these, so um, you want to learn how. And I was like, well, yeah, sure, you know. I enjoy flying. So um, I got started flying with Mike and went through all of his classes and you know re I really kind of enjoyed it because you get the real sense of uh, thermals, you know, rivers of air, um, you know, turbulence, all kinds of things that you don't really experience in a, in a heavier metal aircraft. Maybe so, in some of the lighter aircraft like a T-Crack or something. So if someone wanted to fly an ultralight, is there uh, opportunity at Birchwood or? So Not any longer, no. Um, now basically there are no instructors. Um, there are a few instructors around but the way that the uh, sport pilot rule that was instituted in 2004 requires basically two instructors and there really are not two instructors for the different the different types of aircraft that fall under the sport pilot rule. Previously there were single seat um, ultralight aircraft that operated in a part 103 regulations that didn't require a license um, and then there were two seat ultralights that you could use for instruction but when sport pilot passed the waiver that, that uh, you operated under to instruct is is uh, void now. So if we had aircraft to fly and if we had instructors would a person need a medical? No, no not under the sport pilot rule. Hmm. If, you, it, you, if you're flying under Part 103, you do not need one. But if you were flying a two-seat, which is most of the more modern ones are two-seat, and they're, they're now called special light sport aircraft. Or if it's, a, if it's a home built one, or if it's a previously manufactured one, it's an experimental light sport aircraft. So uh, if someone wanted to really fly an ultralight, can they go to Lure 48 to do it? Or is it just really? Been cut I, I would say that I would recommend that people go to the lower 48 to a, a flight school and there are many in California and Florida and there are some there are quite a few in Texas as well. 
And what would you say, how many hours or how many flights would you say a, a, a reasonably proficient pilot would take to transition? I would say soloing is, it depends on the experience level of, of the person and whether or not you're transitioning into a different type. If you're used to stick and rudder, then you probably could do it in five hours. Hmm. If you're not, you're flying weight shift or powered parachute, that might be a little longer, it might take 10 hours. Interesting. Almost out of time again. Talk a little bit about um, the Experimental uh, Aircraft Association. Oh, we've got a real active chapter here in Anchorage, Chapter 42, and um, basically they hold, uh, they have several meetings in a month. They have a, a board meeting every, the first of Wednesday of every month. They have uh, the second Saturday of every month, they have a breakfast um, at various locations, and they also have the, the third Tuesday of the month, they have their chapter meetings, and we have different topics. Uh, talking about different building scenarios. Um, we've done everything from fabric, um, metal, going visiting guys' hangars that are working on projects. Um, it's just kind of a you know easygoing group of people that are interested in looking at other people's projects and learning from them. Hmm. Sounds sounds great, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to mention before we end tonight's program that the Safety Foundation has begun a new program called the Right Stuff Award. Uh, we awarded the first two people this last fall, and it's just exactly what it sounds like. It's recognizing people that have done the right thing. But I want to encourage you, if you know of anybody in aviation, a pilot, a ramper, an ops dispatcher, a mechanic, that's done something that may have prevented an accident by doing the right stuff, would you let us know? Go to aasfonline at gmail.com. AASF online at gmail.com and let us know. And if you would, give us some contact information for you so we can get in touch with you. And give us some of the details because we want to recognize those people out there that, are, that have the right stuff and are doing the right thing. Rob, thanks for being on the program tonight. My pleasure. Thanks, Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. And until next time, fly safe. Welcome back. Well, winds will be trending down tomorrow here over the northern areas. Uh, 20 knots uh, on average, Wind Canal Glacier Bay. Still some higher gusts early in the day, but uh, coming down to just a, a breeze uh, or about the same here. East northeast, 5 to 15 knots. 15 knots out of the northeast along the coast, even lighter up to the north, coming down to 10 knots from the north and northwest. And then for Sunday, uh, pretty light winds, 10 to 15 knots, still in the north-northeast direction there. But about the same here along the coast, very light winds, 10 to 15 knots. For the uh, Kodiak Island area, on the east side, northeasterlies, kind of turning more northerly down uh, farther to the south there in that marine zone. At about 20 knots, light winds, Shelikoff Strait extend all the way up into northern Cook Inlet. Light winds, Prince William Sound. Northeasterlies 10 to 15. And then for uh, Sunday, still hang on to these light variable winds, Prince William Sound into northern Cook Inlet, and really not much of a wind elsewhere. Uh, maybe 15 knots from a northwest direction there, Kamishak Bay out across the Barren Islands. Westerlies 10 to 15 knots for Kodiak Island, about the same wind pattern here for the North Gulf Coast. And for Bristol Bay, light winds tomorrow, uh, southwest of Kodiak, north at about 15. And then looking at 20 knot winds here across the Alaska Peninsula. Could be a little higher earlier in the day. Could see some small craft gusts for sure here coming out of the uh, bays and passes in the uh, south side zone. And then for Sunday, uh, winds east there for Bristol Bay, but still quite light, quite light winds. Ridge axis moving across these areas. And then throughout the afternoon, winds coming up, swinging around to the southeast, and then possibly by late afternoon up to uh, small craft advisory levels. Out in the Aleutians, southeast release 20 from Madak out to Shimia, and uh, 15 to 20 knots southerlies, west, and then northwest winds for the Fox Islands. And then, actually, uh, again, late tomorrow afternoon, you'll see these winds over the central areas and even back out to these begin to increase, and it looks like storm force winds tomorrow night, late tomorrow night, and into early Sunday. Then the uh, low center comes up here near Amchitka Island, so variable 20 strong gale force northerlies on the uh, west side of that system, south to southeast, 45 knots, maybe even some storm force winds with this. 
uh, still, especially early in the day there. Gales advancing into the Fox Islands. And then behind the front, winds coming down to the 20 to 25 knot range. Then for the uh, southwest coast, pretty light winds, variable to southeast, 10 to 15 knots here from Cuscoquam Bay right up to St. Lawrence Island. West 20 or so for the Pribilof, southwest maybe 20 knots uh, for the uh, northern Bering Sea. Probably looking at a lighter wind condition uh, tomorrow afternoon and evening. And into early Sunday, late in the day, these east winds will be coming up. Small craft advisories, uh, definitely for St. George Island. And for the uh, coast here, very light winds. 10 to 15 knots out into the northern Bering Sea. Light variable winds, a wind-free day up there for St. Lawrence Island. And for the Arctic coast, easterlies 10 to 15. Brisk wind advisories here on the west side uh, tomorrow. And then trending down to just 10 knots by the time you get into the Chukchi Sea. Or, right, or well down here, uh, yeah, that's Chukchi Sea, that's right. Although it extends up through here. Anyway, easterlies uh, tending to increase possibly here on the east side. Otherwise, 10 to 15 knots there for the eastern coast, central coast, and uh, coming down, losing the brisk wind advisories tomorrow night on uh, the west side here. Very light winds, mostly from a south to southeast direction, so no gradient at all there on the west side. And for tonight, uh, again, looks like not much of a gradient here all along the coastline, but enough one up there to keep the easterlies a little higher on the western Arctic coast. Fair night here, light winds most everywhere. Winds along the Tanana River tending to die off. Uh, windiest areas will be here over the northern southeast coast. Variable clouds to the south. And this weakening front, again, keeping some moisture in over the Alaska Peninsula of the, in the form of light snow or drizzle or even some rain conditions. Snow showers back out to the west, but not a whole lot. High pressure building in ahead of the next big storm that moves up to this position. Uh, sometime on Sunday. Have a great evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Alyeska Pipeline Service Company, Alaska's pipeline to the future, delivering oil today, sustaining operations for tomorrow, committed to safety, operating the 800-mile Trans-Alaska Pipeline since 1977.